Well, fellow YouTubers that collect these uh, catalogs, um, I saw earlier somebody on YouTube uh, had a series of Lafayette Radio Electronics catalogs. And um, I happen to have one here that is from 1961. Quite unusual. I think that's the earliest one I have seen so far. And um, the reason that I find this very interesting is because when I was a teenager living in Nutley, New Jersey, uh, or Jersey City at the time, Jersey City at the time, uh, Lafayette Radio Electronics was in Newark. And um, they had so much stuff there. It was incredible. You could go and you could buy speakers. You could buy FM radio sets, you could buy tone arms, tubes uh, for um, television sets, etc., etc. So I thought we would take a quick look through this 1961 catalog. And um, it's quite amazing. This catalog is in very good uh, shape. I was very fortunate to get it on YouTube. But look at this. We have uh, uh, stereo amplifiers, 50 watts, and uh, by Lafayette, right? Uh, they sold products under their own name, but they also sold uh, products uh, from other uh, manufacturers. Uh, we have um, one here, 190, well, 194.50. Amazing. It's a whole system, it looks like. They sold speakers. Um, they sold cabinets. They sold microscopes and telescopes. I mean, they basically sold everything. And for the enthusiast... Uh, it was like incredible when you went to a place like that. The reason that I got interested in Lafayette uh, um, radio is because uh, as a teenager, I wanted to buy a microscope and I went on a paper route and um, I was able to save up enough money to buy a, a microscope that I bought from Lafayette uh, radio. And I'll get to that in a bit because it was an interesting find. Here we have uh, products. They sold Fisher, um, amazing stuff, all kinds of amplifiers, um, kits, they sold kits, they were big with kits, um, and um, crystal sets, or the beginnings of crystal sets, uh, power amplifiers, um, that was completely wired and tested, but you could buy the kit for uh, 134.50, and, um, I remember somebody building one from a kit and it wasn't that bad. It really wasn't. It was, uh, you know, you had to have a soldering iron and you followed the instructions fairly well and it worked out quite well. Um, but look at this, huh? speakers. Uh, you could buy good sets of speakers. You could buy um, Bogan, Sherwood, Harman Kardon, they sold reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders, turntables. Um, Scott, remember uh, Scott, Scott amplifiers? Uh, Marantz, uh, all these companies. So one Macintosh, that was a big name, Macintosh. They used to sell huge power amplifiers. Macintosh was big for that. Um, Harman Kardon, yeah, big name. Look at the speakers that you could buy. You could buy these speakers. You could make your own cabinets and put them in. You'd have to get a crossover network. Um, and uh, let's just move on a little bit. We'll fast forward here. Okay, turntables. All sorts of turntables. You could buy a tone arm. Here's one for twelve fifty. I remember somebody that bought this because they had a turntable. They had a very heavy tone arm. And when the new long playing records came in, and the long playing records came in, I believe in 1948, LPs they called them, and in the 1950s, and then of course uh, in the 50s, stereo came out. So everything was kind of obsolete, and then you had to kind of upgrade. So you'd go out and you'd get yourself a stereo amplifier, a stereo cartridge. Um, unbelievable, look at, the, look at this here, huh? Wow, and here's a little, a weight so that you can measure the uh, weight of the uh, stylus on your record so you wouldn't damage the record. Here we have um, reel to reel tape recorders. Viking was a big name. 
Tanberg. Crown was a very big name. They used to make professional equipment, Crown. And you can see from the price, $730. Wow, that was a lot of money in 1961. Um, look at the power amps. And then, of course, tons and tons of stuff. But let's get, let's go forward to the part that I really wanted to show you, which was uh, um, uh, the, the, the microscopes. Don't know if you'd be interested in the microscopes, but uh, uh, here we have the telescopes, binoculars, um, refracting telescopes. I never saw any reflecting telescopes. And then we get to the microscopes, compound microscopes. And you can get a microscope for $9, $5.95 for a microscope that magnifies 500 times. Can you imagine that? 500 could, must have been really poor quality. But here we have my sets of microscope slides, microtomes for cutting thin slices, stains. You, I remember buying the stains, that's for sure. And I remember buying the microtome so I could make my own thin slices. And um, here we have the page that excites me the most. Here's the micro, microscope that I had to get the 1200 magnification researcher. This was $44.40. And I don't remember if I exactly had that amount of money, but I remember my father uh, helping me. Uh, I believe he helped me with um, the money from the paper route. And this micro microscope had four objectives, five power, 10 power, 40 power and 60 power, and four eyepieces 5, 10, 15, and 20, going all the way up to 1,200. I remember there were a lot of microscopes out there that went to 900 power. Here's one, 900 power, but they didn't go to 1,200. It went to 1,200 because the ex extra 20 power eyepiece. And as a teenager, a young teenager, that really excited me. So I had to have this microscope. And then a friend of mine, he bought a, a same microscope, basically, but it only had three eyepieces instead of four, and it only went to 900 power. This one came with a nice box. I'm not sure what this came in, right? But $34, $10, and, uh, $10 um, less. And then, of course, we had um, a mechanical stage. You could put a mechanical stage on the microscope. But here, here, I remember... My friend bought the 900 power and didn't like the, it didn't have a mechanical stage. So he bought this for 695, which was a much nicer mechanical stage than the one I had. This one actually had a, a very simple mechanical stage. And then of course, I always remember having this catalog, seeing this microscope that actually went to 2000 power. And I always thought, wow, I wish I had the money for that. But $345 is a lot of money. Here we had one that went to 1500 power for $179. Of course, mine went to 1200 power. So I figured, wow, I'm almost there. But not really. This is a much better, much better quality microscope. But here's the, so this is the um, Lafayette radio catalog from 1961. But the, in, the interesting thing is that as a result of that catalog, I was able to buy this microscope. And here it is. This is the 1200 power microscope that was in, in that catalog. You see, I was able to buy that on eBay uh, because I had to have it as a memorabilia. And it's in excellent condition when I got it. It came in a yard sale and... Um, uh, it came in a box, had four eyepieces, and it had the objectives. Uh, needed some cleaning, but the glass was in good condition. The mirror uh, was good. It had a convex and a flat mirror. Everything. Well, anyway, that was my uh, experience with Lafayette Radio. Without Lafayette Radio, I never probably would never have been able to afford a microscope. Thank you. Bye-bye.